In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's a real joy to be with you on this fourth Sunday of Lent, Laetare Sunday, in which we rejoice, even in the midst of this difficult coronavirus outbreak. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to him. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I, I shall want. want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. 
Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Father, may I have your blessing? Mark, I think there's a second reading. Oh, yes. Thank you. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, may I have your blessing. Do you mark may the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, and I really proclaim his only gospel in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am the light of the world, while I, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I see. 
So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin, in sin and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He said, Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of this gospel wipe away our sins. As Deacon Mark has reminded us in the past, we wear robes today, not cakes. We do so rejoicing that we are over halfway through Lent. The liturgical year, of course, knows nothing of recent events, as it may seem hard to rejoice right now. A full week of trying to figure out school with no classrooms. A full week of limited or even no work. And of course, a full week of not being able to gather together for Mass in this church. Admittedly, it is much harder for us here to rejoice when looking out at an empty church. The opening verses of our Gospel seem especially fitting for us today, as Jesus is asked why this man is blind from birth. It speaks to the mystery of suffering, something on us in this pandemic. Jesus doesn't answer the mystery of suffering itself. Rather, he indicates God's power in the midst of it. Jesus says that man's blindness is present so that the works of God might be made visible through him. Somehow, Jesus is also saying that any suffering can be so the works of God might be made visible. As proof, we could look back to a writer who wrote during a far worse epidemic than our own. Julian of Norwich wrote about revelations or showings that she had received from Jesus in prayer during the Black Death that killed at least half and more than likely three quarters of the city of Norwich. Her most famous line from that book, Revelations of Divine Love, is, all shall be well, which reveals a voice of rejoicing at a time that many felt God was punishing the people. What is fascinating is throughout the book, she makes no direct mention of the Black Death. Yet the revelations reveal real rejoicing, and not anything like false comfort. The bulk of her actual revelations have to do with Jesus' passion, one of which describes the crown of thorns in rather excruciating her most famous line, all shall be well, comes from a sect that continues with words likely meant for the people of Norwich, even though it doesn't mention the Black Death explicitly. And they should also speak to us as our lives have been affected so greatly. And with one example, of course, leaving this church empty this weekend. Julian writes, when he, Jesus says, all manner of things shall be well, and understanding is this. From our point of view, there are many deeds evilly done and such great harm given that it seems to us that it would be impossible that ever it should come to a good end. And we look upon this sorrowing and mourning because of it, so that we cannot take our ease in the joyful beholding of God as we would like to do. 
As for why this is the case, Julian continues with words that help explain Jesus describing in our gospel about the works of God being made visible through the man's blindness. She writes, The cause is this, that the use of our reason is now so blind, so lowly, that we cannot know the exalted, wondrous wisdom, the power, and the goodness of the Blessed Trinity. Pay attention to this now, faithfully and trustingly, and at the last end, you shall see it in fullness of joy. Of course, we want to see those fruits she describes right now. We want to rejoice over those fruits now. We could speculate and think of how our domestic churches may be being built up. Those of you viewing at home may be experiencing more family time, letting that domestic church of yours be built up. And how our relationship with God may improve and give us a stronger foundation when we do return to this church. I've already heard people mention the hope that our desire to gather together at Mass, encountering our Lord in the Eucharist, could grow insatiable through this time. For now, though, we await those fruits. Pausing to rejoice that Jesus, of course, has already won the victory over sin and death. A victory we are called to participate in even now, both in suffering, but also in growing in hunger for God and God alone. A hunger we're always called to have. A hunger that brings rejoicing not only for us, but also for God. So the liturgical year knows nothing of recent events, but as Julian of Norwich reminds us, that is a good thing, for it keeps our eyes focused so that we aren't blinded by current events. Rather, we are able to see the Lord Jesus even in them, and as Julian concludes that section we've read from, we can interpret a mighty comfort about all the works of our Lord that are still to come. I believe in one, one God, God, the, the Father, Father of Almighty, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in our Heavenly Father's presence, we present these petitions. For the church throughout the world, that she continue to be a beacon of hope and light for the world throughout this crisis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our Archbishop Paul, his suffragan bishops, Daniel and Eusebio, for Father Mike, for Father Ryan, that <clears throat> through the graces of their ordination, they might be faithful and wise shepherds throughout this uh, this health event that we're experiencing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of our parishioners, um, that uh, they might endure this, uh, this health pandemic uh, in 
good health and uh, for those that do contract the virus that they are healed quickly and thoroughly we make this prayer uh, we pray to the lord lord hear our, our prayer. prayer for civic leaders that they govern with wisdom and generosity toward the citizens of our nation our state our globe and our city we pray to the lord lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer and for our beloved dead that they might see the light of christ and indeed uh, spend eternity in his glorious presence we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, graciously hear these petitions and grant that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. This would be God forever. Country share in the divinity of Christ, who humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When, when we, we eat, eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, 
until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.